or hardships. Regardless of the challenges that we face this year, we plan to improvise and adapt, just as our nation's heroes always have. We feel like now more than ever, it's important that we stand in unity to honor and remember each and every one of them. And so we do ask that if it's possible to move forward safely with replacement that you do. So let's talk about keeping your volunteers safe. At this point, anyone who has been out and about is familiar with the know your W's of COVID-19. You know, that pretty little, you know, poster that's on every building that you walk into nowadays. Um, so wear your mask, wait six feet apart, wash your hands and sanitize frequently. So it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone, but just make sure that you're communicating with your core volunteers regarding what the expectations are for wreath delivery day, wreath placement and ceremony day, and also for wreath cleanup. For wreath placement and ceremony planning, we've put together four options that we feel will fit most of our locations. However, we understand that every community is unique so if you feel like none of these options will work for you, please just reach out to your regional liaison or myself and we are happy to help you, you know, find a plan that, and options that work best for you. Option one is obviously kind of best case scenario with the cemetery open to the public and a cap on the number of volunteers allowed so that you stay in compliance with any local gathering restrictions. This option will work well with a lot of our smaller locations that don't have a large number of volunteers. Option two would be similar to option one, but with the ceremony being virtual instead of in person. We will talk about how to hold that virtual ceremony in just a little bit. So in option two, the wreaths would be staged throughout the cemetery in advance. And for those locations with a larger number of volunteers, they could have assigned arrival times with sections staggered to space out volunteers and groups. We are currently working with our technology partner on a solution that will make event signups easy for you through the volunteer button on your pages. This will also help with staggering of volunteers. We will send out an update. Um, sorry, dog's barking. <laughs> uh, we will send out an update shortly on how that work on how that will work, but just know that you're not in this alone. We are here to help and we are actively working to develop solutions to make your efforts more efficient and seamless. So we're not just gonna throw you out there and tell you to go for it. We, we are going to help you guys come up with some ways to, to handle some of the, the volunteer piece of it. Option three is gonna be ideal for some of our cemeteries with a large number of volunteers or ones in an areas where they have a lot of wreaths but need to limit the number of volunteers due to COVID-19. The wreaths could be placed over multiple days, for instance, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, or sim similar variation, and hold a virtual ceremony that could be shared on the 19th. This option also requires a sign up to volunteer in order to stagger volunteers by day and time this would work well if you have a lot of people who want to place very specific wreaths as you can coordinate the times with them where, where you can still stay with any gathering limits. Option four will be needed for those who have really tight restrictions. This option has no public volunteers and only a limited number of core volunteers or cemetery staff who place the wreaths as well as a virtual ceremony that's either held or shared on the 19th. So as I previously mentioned, we will be updating you regarding how to handle um, the volunteer staggering. So, that, so to ensure that you don't miss any of those updates, please take a moment to check that you're receiving all of the emails from your regional liaison. Sometimes these can automatically filter to your spam folder, making it easy to miss important updates. If you find an email from us that's not in your, that is in your spam folder, just make sure you mark it as not spam which will move it to your inbox going forward. Can I also say, Julie, this is Amber. Uh, there is also a unsubscribe feature with many of our emails that come from our system. And there are 
options for unsubscribe and we've found that um, sometimes the universal unsubscribe is clicked on accident. So if you haven't received a location, if you're a location coordinator, which everyone here is, uh, and you haven't received a, a location connection from us on a regular basis, on a monthly basis, please let your liaison know. We can check on that unsubscribe and make sure that you didn't accidentally click something or something didn't get um, you know, it might just be that you need to accept coming from sender or something along that line so that you're receiving our emails. Yeah. You should be getting something at least once a month from us. So if you're not, uh, probably, you know, more like every week, you know, we're, we're sending out a lot of stuff. So if you're not getting something, just, you know, reach out to us and make sure we can, we can check on that for you. So for the virtual ceremonies, at this point in 2020, I think most of us have had some type of virtual experience, whether it's virtual learning, ceremonies, or connecting virtually through webinars. Virtual doesn't have to be some big fancy event. Um, in fact, this could actually help be a really great opportunity for us to reach people who may have never had the opportunity to attend a Raise Across America event before. So when you're planning the ceremony, just think of the impact this outreach could have going forward next year. So holding a virtual ceremony can be as simple as streaming your ceremony on Facebook Live. This is a great tool for sharing your ceremony. And if you have a Raise Across America location page or event set up, um, and if you don't have a Facebook page for your location, reach out to your liaison so we can point you in the right direction to set one up. With the Facebook Live, you can share it multiple times leading up to the 19th to get pe encourage people to join back on that day, um, as well as invite your community to host Facebook watch parties to increase participation. You can also, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, you can also collaborate with your local TV affiliates or public access stations to air the full ceremony live for viewers. Another great option for virtual ceremony is to pre-record the event and then share it on the 19th. If you have multiple groups that want to be involved with the ceremony like Honor Guard, you know, Boy Scouts, etc. Um, this option could allow you to record each in segments and then put it all together for, for the event. Whichever option you choose, please just make sure that you communicate your event plans with your regional liaison. Communication will especially be important this year so that everything can run smoothly and we can make sure that throughout the system, everything is sharing the same information so people know what to expect. So as guests of the cemetery, it's important that we work closely with your cemetery staff to ensure that we are meeting all of their expectations. If a cemetery has some concerns um, about opening up to the public, some questions that you can ask them to kind of get the ball rolling is, would they allow a small group of core volunteers to place the wreaths? Would they allow the wreaths to be placed over a couple days to limit the number of core volunteers on site at a time? Would the cemetery staff be willing to place the wreaths themselves? Will they accept ceremonial wreaths and allow a pre-recorded ceremony to be shared on National Wreaths Across America Day? Let them know that we can be flexible and that we're able to work together to find something that they are comfortable with. And don't be afraid to ask for help. The liaisons and myself are always happy to get on the phone with you and your cemetery contact to talk through specifics to find something that's gonna work for everyone. So communication, we're, you're gonna hear that from us over and over this year. That is going to be key. You need to make sure that you're communicating your location plans with the Reads Across America staff, the cemetery, the groups that fundraise for your locations, your volunteers, and your sponsors. In the next week, you will receive a link to a Google form from your liaisons, as well as kind of a planning to do's um, list that you can kind of check off things that we need to make sure we're doing. Um, the, there is no rush on getting us back to us the details. Um, if you don't have everything ironed out, that's fine. Just submit this information back as soon as you have those plans in place. And your liaison will use that information to make sure that your Raise Across America page is updated and reflecting all that information for you. This will save you guys some time. Um, so if you're not super comfortable with posting that information on your pages yourself, it will save you that hassle and the liaisons will you know, take care of that piece for you. Some ways that we can communicate wreath day event plans are through page alerts. 
These are set in the system. You can set them up or we can set them up for you. Um, and it will pop up a box when people visit your page that just says kind of what you're planning to do. And for now, it can even be something as simple as like, hey, Reads Across America Day is happening. Please, you know, check back later for more specific details. Um, they, we also have through messaging, uh, your volunteers, groups, and sponsors. Again, this can all be done through your dashboard. And if you have questions about how that needs, you know, how that works, reach out to your liaison. We can help you with that. You also want to make sure that you have a direct conversation with your cemetery contact to find out how they want to handle any situations that come up. If someone shows up at an event and is upset that they're unable to participate due to a limited number of volunteers. We have to expect that we are not going to be able to make everyone happy this year. Um, but I think we've been doing this COVID stuff for several months now. It seems much longer than that forever now. Um, so I think we're everyone's kind of used to the fact that we have to kind of be willing to work around things and things are going to be different. So don't feel like you have to have an answer for everyone. Um, you are never going to make everyone happy. All you can do is what you, is best for the largest, the, the community. We also highly encourage all location coordinators to utilize your dashboard, location page, and social media pages to provide updates for your local supporters about important changes or details for your event. It is okay to tell people you are still working through plans and will post updates as they are available. And I just want to stress again that Facebook is a great tool to use for keeping the community updated with event plans. So if you don't have a Facebook page, reach out to us and we can help you get one set up for your location. Um, and our customer service people will tell you that that is, as we get closer to Reed's Day, that is where people are going to look. They're like, well, I looked on Facebook and I didn't see an event. Um, and it's just super easy to use. So please take advantage of that. And we will be sending out some emails with information on who you can reach out to to set that up um, within the next week or two. Um, this is Amber again. I will say we have a full-time employee and many of you know her, Sam, Samantha. She does a wonderful job. She can get your page, a Facebook page started for you. She can get content up and over to you that's specific for your location. It's a really, I know it can seem intimidating, but um, only about 10% of our locations actually have location pages. So it's definitely an underutilized tool that we can help you with. And it's a great way for people to just easily find information about what's happening at the cemetery, provide regular real-time updates. Um, and it's just, you know, something we're here to help you with. So please don't be afraid to ask. Yep. And she makes, um, Sam makes these really great graphics that you can share on there as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we want to, um, I want to find my spot here. Uh, we want to make sure that all of you know that we are here to help guide you through this process. This is not something we expect you to go out alone. Uh, we will be providing a lot of information in the coming weeks to the point where you will probably be tired of seeing my the liaison's names come through your email. Um, we will be sharing template emails, press releases, and a lot of other tools that you can use locally. Um, and most of these will come via email since we are sending out so many. So make sure again that you have an active email in the system. And if you think you're missing those emails, reach out to your liaison for guidance. So before we go into questions, we have two members of our SWAT team that we're going to invite to speak to you about how they are handling replacements at their locations. So first we've got Randy Luer, who is the location coordinator for the Florida National Cemetery in Bushnell. Um, Randy, can you tell us a little bit about how many volunteers and wreaths you have and how you are handling replacement this year? Yeah, and sure. You may have to unmute yourself. Um, appreciate it. So we, I have had meetings with our uh, cemetery. We are go. Um, just to let everybody know, I, uh, we are a large cemetery, 110,000 plus buried at the cemetery. Um, there's, it's a very large area. Um, previously in past years, we generally get about 10,000 volunteers and last year we placed 36,000 wreaths um, on veterans graves. Um, this year, obviously, probably, I don't know where, I haven't looked through numbers, but we're way behind 
Um, we're currently at about 5,800 wreaths um, sponsored, but we're still, we're still trying to get gold, which is 40,000 wreaths this year. Um, we had our meeting with the cemetery and actually all the options that I was giving to our director, he didn't like at all. And he came up with a drive through option, which what we're going to be doing is staging two handout areas in the two entrances of the cemetery as the as the volunteers drive into the cemetery we will hand them a, approximately two wreaths it'll be depending on our, our wreath count we will hand out two wreaths per person in each car they will not be allowed out of the car at the handout area we will hand it to them inside the car and then they can go anywhere in the cemetery to place those wreaths. Now there's a couple things once you start thinking about it, we had just like all the other cemeteries, I'm sure there's, we have parking nightmares in cemeteries. Well, one of the things that this eliminates is that now the person is coming, they're placing the wreath and leaving. Sure, it, it's going to be, it's, there's going to be some backup and all that. But again, I, we won't have that by doing a drive through. There's not that everybody is staying there for three or four hours to, to place the wreaths and for a ceremony and all that. Our ceremony will be done virtually. I will be doing actually pre recording that probably over the course of three or four days. And what I'm planning on doing, I haven't talked to headquarters or anything like that yet, but I'm thinking about putting it on YouTube and then posting it on Facebook. Um, but that's kind of, I'm still kind of up in the air on that exactly how I want to do that. Um, but again, for the parking concerns of letting cars in, in the cemeteries, because I know there's some, some areas that bus people in for those that have large uh, volunteers, Again, those people aren't going to be at the cemetery for probably more than a half hour to place their wreaths and then they'll be leaving. So it's just a constant churn. What we used to do in previous years, we would run like Arlington. We would open up our, our the semi trailers at about 1030. Again, we will be handing out wreaths now. We're going to, we're going to lengthen that out and start at eight and go until two o'clock in the afternoon. So that will hopefully, I mean, and I'm going to keep pushing that later in the after, you know, that, that later times, that will spread the people out coming to the cemetery. And that's the key to this is just to spread the time out instead of getting a crush of people there, you know, at eight, nine o'clock, whatever time you were starting, try to spread that out a little bit so you don't have that, that crush of that big group of people, spread it out. And hopefully, you know, it, it can work. Sure, there's going to be snags in it, you know, wherever you're at. But think about those ideas because while I'm a large cemetery and, you know, some of these things may be able to help even the small cemeteries. And really, that's about all I got unless there's questions or Julie, if you wanted me to talk about something else. I think that's pretty good. Thanks for sharing that. So. Next, we're gonna hop over to Chris Ruth, who is our location coordinator for the Lynn Grove Cemetery in Greeley, Colorado. Um, and Chris, can you also tell us a little bit kind of how many volunteers you have, how many reefs you're gonna have, and how you're handling it? And then after that, we'll open it up to questions. Hi, everyone from Colorful Colorado. Uh, we've already met with our cemetery. Uh, it's a mutual cemetery. We have uh, close to 2,000 veterans and we have around 200 volunteers that actually come every year. Uh, we've run it by the city as well as the staff at the cemetery, and we will place uh, volunteers at our gate as people drive in. We have three entry gates. They'll be directed to a specific area uh, where they will be able to place the reeds in that area. Uh, in, in the past, everyone's come to the center of the cemetery at Soldier's Field. We do our little ceremony and then we disperse them out throughout the cemetery. We have about 66 acres, so we spread them out all over the cemetery. Uh, what we're gonna do this year is we'll run a Facebook live stream and probably do a virtual of some sort on, on YouTube 
The city of Greeley also has designated a social media expert employee for uh, the wreath day. So that's nice to have some more help with some of that virtual stuff. But each volunteer that we have will meet and greet each car coming to the cemetery. They'll be directed to a specific area. And those who wanna do a, a grave specific will go to a different gate and go into that gate to be escorted to where they need to place their wreaths. So we will be following the guidelines of our county as well as what our city forefathers and our state request us at that time. So right now we're pretty flexible with how things are going. We don't know what's gonna happen, but by November we'll have everything pretty well established as far as this is the plan that we'll probably be going with. Our ceremony will continue. It will be a quiet ceremony in the sense that it'll still go on at Soldier's Field. It will be filmed. Everyone can pull up their Facebook in the cemetery and watch it from where they are parked and where they're placing their reason, the specific areas they've been assigned. So we won't have anybody converging on one big area. So we're really happy our community is supporting this and they were really concerned that we would not carry this ceremony on this year and we said we we will do it so we're we're already setting plans for that we're pretty well set awesome thanks so much for sharing that sure thank you so um amber if you don't have anything I, we can open up to questions if you have anything else you want to share though go for it no i was just going to point out we have a few folks who have their hands raised so you can go ahead and jump into people's questions i, I don't know if you can see that Julie. i can't see that so if you just want to Someone sure. wants to call them out. All right. Uh, I think the first person I see is uh, Misha Richardson in Sarasota. Hi, everybody. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you. I am actually meeting with our cemetery director on Thursday. And a um, huh, little bit of shakeup going in, on in VA. And I, this isn't to go anywhere, but he's being replaced. So I'm going to be dealing with a brand new cemetery director. Um, however, he's our current director is willing to work with me. And the one thing that as for, I think this is my, I don't know if it's my third year or fourth is location coordinator. But the one thing that I felt was really important when I came on board with this position was to assure that family had the opportunity to place their loved ones wreath first. So I've developed a game plan similar to Randy's where I allow family members to come in first, say from eight to nine or eight to nine 30 and go and lay their loved one's wreath and they'll get one wreath. Then they're going to have to go back, get in line oh God, for a drive through effect. Um, size is a problem. Parking is always a problem for us. We always have in excess of 3000 volunteers on motorcycles and buses, and we're going to mm -hmm. do cars and motorcycles only. So I'm very nervous about this shakeup within uh, the National Cemetery Administration. I'm sure you guys will hear about it because it is a ripple effect from what I'm understanding based on what he said, and I will know more Thursday. Um, I would not recommend everybody contacting their cemetery director, if they're a national, tomorrow going, are you going to be leaving? Because <laughs> that would yeah. like really freak everybody out. I was heartbroken. I'll be honest with you. I cried for about an hour. I'm very close to this man. So I love Randy's idea. And for the larger cemeteries, I think it's a great idea. We'll be placing almost 16,000 wreaths this year. And I have always, we have always made our goal. Well, since I've been location coordinator, we've made our goal every year. Trish can attest to that. So I, if you guys hear anything, it would be appreciated if you could pass that along. And the other thing that I am up against every year is one of the now called sponsorship groups. Several of them are obstinate. They want to run the show and they want to do it their way. And they're very difficult to communicate with. On our dashboard, we have an email address for someone, but I can never seem to get these people to really come back to me and make the phone call. And I really hope that you guys stress to these sponsorship groups, yes, I'll use the correct term this year, 
that they need <laughs> to follow the directive from the location coordinator. And Misha, that's a great point. We're actually going to be doing some communications with just specifically the sponsorship groups um, coming up soon and directing them to make sure that they reach out to their location coordinator for guidance because we do understand that, especially this year, they need to make sure that they know what's going on um, with the ceremony. And again, that kind of all comes back to the communication. You guys let us know what you have the plans in place and we can make sure that we're coordinating that, communicating that with the sponsorship groups as well. I think that's great, but I really wish you guys would like lighten up and give us their phone numbers. It would be so easy for me to make a phone call, introduce myself, some of them, the, especially the new ones, the newer groups, they have, don't have a clue who to reach out to and they don't understand how the dashboard works. You know, that's a big deal. And, it, you know, I see it already. Their times are wrong. The text they're putting in is wrong. And I get that you guys are working on them. But a lot of them just set it up for basics and that's it. And then we never hear anything about them. And then they're the ones that come in at noon. And our ceremony is always at 10. You know, they show up at noon and they're mad because it's all done and over with. <laughs> so, I think those are things that I think that we should reach out to your liaison and we can we can work on that offline and have a conversation and reach out to those sponsorship groups and make sure okay. that we're all in communication. All righty. Thank you. Thanks, Misha. Thank you. And then I see, um, I know Judy, Judy's iPad wanted to talk. I think that was Judy <laughs> Carlisle from San Antonio. You're on mute, Judy Carlisle. There you I, was are. Just say, I was just saying hi. I didn't realize I had set, put my hand up. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, then you're off. Huh? Hi, Judy. Hi. Hi. Judy. hi. Uh, I have LaVon's iPad. And you are on muted, so I just need to unmute yourself. Okay. I'm here. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay. I'm wondering what, what you're going to do with the presentation ceremony for the memorial wreaths. We always have eight servicemen pr present those wreaths and we put them on a stand when we have our, our ceremony. How are we, how will we handle that if we do a virtual uh, you'll ceremony? Still or? You'll still receive those wreaths and that's where we, when we're saying like do the virtual, um, the ceremony can go follow the same script. It can follow the same guidelines. It's just, if you have, you know, restrictions, we're, around gatherings, you're going to want to stream that live or record it and share it later rather than having a bunch of people attend the ceremony. But you would basically still just proceed as normal. Have your, you know, your ceremony. It's just without the, the people there. Okay. Well, you're talking to somebody who's old and who doesn't. <laughs> well, that's why we're here to help. So do virtual, I'm, I mean, the, the virtual uh, ceremony just makes me so nervous to even think about doing that because I have no idea. And Lavon, this is Amber. So there are different options and the virtual, it can be virtual can mean a lot of things. So the other option could be, you could still host your ceremony depending on what your cemetery allows, obviously in terms of numbers and what's happening in your community in terms right. of restrictions. But um, another way to do this virtually is, you know, we could reach out to a local public access TV or TV station in the region and say, hey, would you like to come out and cover this for us and have it shared in the community because we can't be open to a larger group. Um, we can certainly help you with that. It doesn't, we're not saying it has to be virtual in any way. It could be something where maybe somebody records it and it's posted, mm -hmm. posted well, after the fact. We have our, we work with the uh, Nebraska uh, Memorial Cemetery in Grand Island mm -hmm. and so there's 1400 graves which uh, <laughs> is very small by the standards of those other people bless their hearts that they're working with that many grave sites but we always or we have last year was the first year I, I did this so I mean I'm I'm a real newbie but we had the ceremony at the United Veterans Club which is down the street from the cemetery mm -hmm. And so we're thinking we can't have it there because we had 400 people in one room. And I'm sure, I mean, I'm gonna to talk to the county health people and the cemetery people, but we did our memorial wreath ceremony there. 
Then everybody went down to the cemetery and we put those memorial wreaths on, on spikes at the cemetery. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm just wondering if we need to do the whole thing at the cemetery outside just to keep away from the crowd thing. I don't I, know. I think it's gonna be a matter of Lamone. I mean, obviously I would reach out to your liaison um, I'm not, I'm not, depending on where you are, where, where are you located? I'm sorry, what's Nebraska. 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 It's Rochelle is my yeah. director. Rochelle, and we can definitely talk, uh, Rochelle can talk to you about different options. I think it depends on what happens in your community, but outside okay. probably best. You can have probably more people outside in most places, yeah. at least in my experience so far in the last few months, anything outside is a little bit more, there's a little more leniency. Okay. Um, that being said, you know, the local, the local groups that you're working with, one of those folks might be able to do something with you where it's videotaped by, you know, maybe it's a local paper or mm -hmm. a sponsorship group you're working with. So don't feel overwhelmed by that. We don't want that to scare anybody. It's oh, meant I'm overwhelmed. Don't, meant don't, to be, <laughs> yeah, don't be. It's meant to be a, an option. And we certainly can work with you to help provide some other options to maybe find, um, you know somebody who would be yeah. able to support you in that i like the idea of of ahead of time having those boxes of reset at different spots in the ceremony or in the cemetery i think that's workable for our cemetery at, with only 1400 grave sites if we have you know 400 volunteers we could okay go to a box i don't know i think that would work yeah we'll see all right. Well, I'll talk to the rest of the people who are helping me with this and we'll see. And I'll talk, I haven't talked to cemetery yet. I knew I needed to. And our guidelines say we have to meet the, the county health department's guidelines before we do anything. Yeah, so. absolutely. appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I'm going to move on to Michael Hicks. I see you, Michael. There you are, Michael from... Let's say is that my, Michael from Pennsylvania or Jacksonville? There's two Michael Hicks. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Michael. Are you off mute? No, you got to unmute yourself. I think I did it. There you go. Can you hear me? Yep. Go ahead. Hi, everyone. Uh, I, I, uh, I, we have 14,000 uh, uh, wreaths at our cemetery this, this year, and uh, we do place our wreaths in, at every section, just enough wreaths to do every section, so our sections are, are spread it out. And I'd like a couple questions would be, uh, are our deliveries going to be able to come any earlier? Because if we, if I, because my cemetery, I have 3,000 people usually show up, and uh, Whenever uh, I'm thinking about these Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, option three that you were talking about here, you know, and maybe doing a Friday just for family members to come in and specifically set their great, set their, their wreaths on Friday. And then on Saturday, have, have my virtual thing. And there may be a drive-through where people would drive through and the first section you come to until it's done is to move on to the next section after that section is done and and then if we would have to go to sunday maybe some uh employees would help there with the cemetery and uh we're not going to let any buses in we have meetings with i've had meetings almost uh, every week with my cemetery director i mean he's probably getting sick and tired of me but we but we're, we have construction going on at ours all around it and they took all of our parking so this drive through might work for us if we can make it work but he told me that uh the way that theirs is set up for their funerals right now that they're only allowing 25 people at a time in the cemetery and mm -hmm. with that 25 people you know some of that's going to be included in employees and we're trying to get that the employees away from that number so that we can use all of his employees to help spread them out if we have to you know but uh, it's, it's hard raising money and uh, we're doing the best we can. I got a coin and if anybody wants to use my coin, the one side of it's a die made th through signature, the same people who made the coin for everyone there for uh, Reese Across America. And uh, I hope 
you could use the, it's a two inch coin. It's a beautiful coin to come out very nice. Trying to move that along and um, just the deliveries. I was just wondering about the deliveries getting them a little bit earlier. So we, we are working with the logistics team on that. And part of that, that's something we've discussed. We know that that's something that's going to have to be worked in um, for the larger locations that are going to have to do multiple days. Um, we can't, we don't have tons of details to go with that, obviously, because we have to gather information from you guys first as far as how your plans are going to go and then go back to logistics and kind of come up with a game plan from that. So that's something that's still being developed and we will be sharing stuff with you on that very soon, as soon as we can. Um, but just know that we're going to, you know, do what we need to do to, you know, accommodate this to make this possible for you guys. Did the cemetery directors did they did they say when they were going to talk to the act to the actual cemetery directors the the head the headquarters did they talk to them because then this uh -huh. way because I I want to reach out and start my press releases and you know because I deal with all all my radio stations around the city of Pittsburgh and I get uh, you know we're tri-state so I have to deal with West Virginia Eastern Ohio uh, and southwestern Pennsylvania so I'm dealing with three different states you know, just trying to get the word out with, for everyone. Michael, uh, this is Amber. I would, I would recommend not putting out a press release until you have an approved game plan. So you don't want to have to go back and send out new information to the public that would potentially confuse people. So once you're able to get a plan approved by your cemetery, that's when I would go out and announce that wreath day is happening with modified plans and here's what to expect that's and I would and we certainly we have a template that um, we're going to be sending out to folks in the location connection this month for basically that has that shell for you to fill in with your custom details but really I would just recommend holding off until you have that plan um, kind of fine-tuned with your cemetery director the at this point we can't we can only make guesses as to when that's mm -hmm. going to be rolled out um, we are very hopeful it would we were hopeful it would have been done by now i know that some cemeteries have been in, in communication um we're hopeful it'll be in the next week or so um, i would just encourage you to continue to touch base with your cemetery director and and plan, make a plan with them when they have the information available to them yeah. i wish i had a better answer a better timeline for you on that but um kind of where we're at you know, with Veterans Day coming up too, that, that's going to determine a lot how everything's done too. Because we usually have a big turnout for Veterans Day, and it's in November. And uh, and he he's like basing our plans on their plans for them letting them how how they're going to be able to do their Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. Well, Mike, we can also we can talk some more too. We can I I know we've talked before. This um, we can certainly help you with getting some plans in place if if needed. So. Feel free to, you're Pennsylvania, so Rachel, right? That Amber, yep, yep, I'm from yep. geography, so that was a guess. <laughs> um, all right, so we're gonna move on to Patrick Murphy. He's been waiting patiently for his turn to go. Patrick, if you can unmute yourself. Okay. There you go. You okay. know, uh, <laughs> so my deal is, is I have five different cemeteries. I have two different counties. Right now, as it stands, there's not going to be a, a Veterans Day pr uh, program in any of the cemeteries. So the date's going to be for the wreaths across America only. And I'm going to go, we probably only get like between uh, maybe 25 to 35 people at each cemetery. And we get enough wreaths that they all lay, in, they lay in each cemetery. I do, I myself do... Uh, Four of the programs are actually I do I have five registered. We actually do six. One's a Civil War cemetery that can't you can't deliver to because there's nobody there. But we're gonna have you're gonna have the six foot uh, you know spacing between people, and we're gonna, I'm gonna do the program at each one of the places. I'll have my uh, my vice uh, commander do uh, a program at each one the other two that he does and I'm going to do four of them and that we do that all the time. We literally start at about nine in the morning and we'll be done around four in the afternoon. And we'll just tell the people they space out and we spread out the, the, uh, the boxes 
uh, in different locations depending on the cemetery. And well, we have relatively enough parking. I mean, you're not having like a thousand people showing up. Uh, we're shooting for roughly a thousand wreaths this year between all five of those cemeteries or six of the cemeteries, uh, which is our biggest year. We've done really well this year for uh, starting this. We've only been doing it a couple of years. And we're really not into an area where people are really, what am I going to call it? They're not that, I'm going to call it, I'm going to just say, they're not as gung ho as they are around the rest of the country. I'm the post commander for an American Legion post. And we actually do the, the we, we help the uh, auxiliary. Because the auxiliary does one of the cemeteries and we help them with that. And so it's like a, you know, a whole thing that we, we've gotten the opportunity to do that. But my thing is, is that the dashboard works really well. I put all my times up on the dashboards. I mean, it's really hard. I mean, I got to figure out what time to what place it is. <laughs> People look at me and go, I said, and I tell them, don't all you plan on going to every single one of them. Because some people go try to get to go to all six of the cemeteries and lay wreaths at each place. But I tell them, don't do that. Just, you know, we're going to do a certain amount. But I'm going to say this is, uh, I need to find out last order date that we have to order Reese. And, and the other thing is, is uh, I'm going to go and I'm going to say this. If, for, sorry, if for some reason that, that it gets canceled, you'll take the Reese on to next year, correct? Does that make okay. sense? Yep. Joe, you want to go ahead? Um, yeah, so I mean, obviously, we feel like we've put a lot of plans out here that, you know, we can work with the cemeteries to try to accommodate that. Worst case scenario, you get down, you know, we, we get closer and it, there's just no way to safely do it. Then obviously, yes, the, with the wreaths, we will honor those over to next year. Um, okay. But that is kind of the last option. I think it's great that you, you know, you're planning to move forward. You've got plans in place. So that's great. And, you know, I know your concerns about them not doing anything for Veterans Day, but I think that this is a great opportunity that, you know, this year there has been so many things that are canceled and still being canceled. And if this is something that we can make safely happen, this is a great opportunity to reach people who we've never reached before and getting people who just want to do something good. They want to be involved. They want to see these veterans honored. And so even if we have to do these ceremonies modified and, you know, they're smaller, they're, there's going to be a little bit more work on, you know, everyone's part. But I think it's just a great opportunity to grow your, the education about Reads Across America in your area, you know, and have yep. you off to a good start for future years as well. Are we going to um, we'll hop over to Lori because she's had her hand raised for a while. And I just, one, 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 one last question. One question, the cutoff. So just so Patrick, That's the cutoff is uh, the Monday after uh, uh, Thanksgiving, but please know that that doesn't yeah. mean that's the last day you can sponsor Rees. You can sponsor Rees right oh, through the day, right through, and whatever we can get on the trucks we will, and um, or will be rolled over. So just know we, we actually purchased extras. Okay. So, I, mean, awesome. I just want to make sure that question got answered before we went to. I just want to know the last date because people call in and say they might call the day before. Can I get a wreath? <laughs> You're like, yeah, we'll get you one. And again, we'll be sending all that information out, reminding you frequently um, uh, as we get closer. So, um, Laura, I want to thank you, you thank you, ladies, for doing such a great job. No problem, because without you guys, we couldn't do our job at the end, other end. Well, we appreciate your hard work. Right, Laura. Yeah, you guys are you guys are pretty amazing. We know that. <laughs> I'm I'm in Arizona, as you guys well know. You know. And um, the lady who was asking about questions about how to do the videos and everything, I mean, you can reach out to your VFWs, your CVMAs. They can, I mean, most of them are willing and are there anyways for us here in Arizona they are. I mean, people are willing to reach out, especially times like this. People are looking for things to do. They'll teach you how to do that and they'll help you to do it. So that was just my thoughts to that lady who was asking you know, how to make videos and how to get at it out there on social media. There's even a, my granddaughter teaches me how to use some things. 
Yeah. I was going to say, this is, there's I, a lot of kids at home right now with, you know, doing yeah. this virtual learning. They are pros at it. Let's give them a good project to work on for school and put them in charge yeah, of Yeah, and actually, I later. mean, the, the VFW is doing a program called uh, Patriotism and Pride, where these kids are looking for, you know, to get these scholarships. So, I mean, that's a way to teach them the patriotism and Earn, earn that scholarship from the VFW. That's great. Thank you for sharing that, Laura. I didn't, I'm gonna, I wrote that one down. Yeah, and there's a, there's also one that is, if you know any kids between the ages of six and 16, there's a national anthem VFW $1,000 scholarship. It's on the VFW site, if you know any kids who sing the national anthem. Awesome. Just Thank a thought, you. just throwing the ideas. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. I have nothing else to do. Hey, Amber, this is Karen. Um, um, we're going to let Karen talk for a second real quick. Karen, what's I'll say hi, and you just turn it right over to me. First, I, I just want to say what a great job um, staff is doing and trying to get information out. We're working really hard. Um, I, I want to tell you guys how important you are and how you're needed right now. Um, I don't know how many of you followed along with our 9-11 flag waving or with the Tuesday flag waving that we do. Um, and this is where I get emotional, but people are so hungry for the voices that represent those that served and those that gave us that freedom. They want this and they need this. And I think if you can, if you can get involved with the things that we're doing right now, um, especially if you have Facebook pages and you do share in things like our Tuesday flag waving, um, people see that as an organization that's working on mission year round and I think that will help you spread the word and I know that here at home at the home office we're doing everything we can to develop little modules of things that will help you get out into the community so people can see that we're not just a one trick pony that we walk the walk year round but um, Amber you can attest to the amount of uh, news media that reacted to all of the locations all over the country that participated in the flag waving. And what we're doing is so important that people will come if we let them know that we're out there and the staff here will have, we've got a lot of ideas uh, brewing. So don't lose hope because it really is important and what you're doing means an awful lot to an awful lot of people and we couldn't do it without you. So I just wanted to say that, that we're getting a lot of support. And Amber, you might, maybe you can just share a little bit about that, how far reaching that support was over the last last few weeks. Yeah, we actually saw numbers similar to reseason um, of years past. This past uh, couple of weeks, we had, um, I think the last, uh, as of this morning, it was over 700 uh, media mentions, and we had about 14 hits in every state covering the 9-11 flag waving. And that was really, you know, it was a simple call to action of come out and join us. And I think that one of the reasons why it was, people responded so well to it is that it truly was about the mission. It was pure and simple. It was about the mission. It was bringing awareness to um, communities of things that people can do. And I, I think that's an important thing to stress to everyone here that you know, what we're talking about tonight and even, you know, I know there's some concerns about fundraising and there's, you know, this is, there's a lot to think about here, but let's focus on the things that we can do. And we know that we have the tools available through um, our liaisons and through our website and just tools that we're going to be making available to communicate with people and communicate with your communities. Um, we know that um, many of these communities are going to make this happen and we can um, help you do that. So just if we can always focus on the things that we can do, I think we'll be successful. And I think that was a great uh, indication. We saw some really great increases in our social media numbers over the last couple of weeks as well, just as a result of people getting on board. So um, we're, we're eager to share more good news in the coming months that you guys can continue to use uh, to put out in your own communities as well. So and we, I can't say enough. I mean, I know most of, there are a lot of people on this phone have talked to Sean and we had, you know, we had like 30 something, 36 interviews or something in it last week. And, and it was all you guys. Um, Karen did a few too, um, <laughs> but mostly you guys. And uh, we appreciate it. It really, it matters. And so I think if we just keep that can do attitude, we'll be successful. But, and I, 
feel like I saw a bunch of hands just go up and I. Stacy has her hand up if she yeah. wants. <laughs> her literal hand up. <laughs> Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Hey, um, I just wanted to say thank you for this hundred day challenge, the hundred day challenge that you guys put out there. Um, I was a little nervous because I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this, but now I find myself looking forward to the emails every day and thinking of creative ways of putting it out there on social media. And I, I'm hoping that maybe next year we could expand on it and maybe do like once a month kind of challenges just to get the word out there I like um, consistently. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Thank you. And I appreciate that feedback. We um, um, we're glad to hear that people are utilizing it. And if you and if anyone doesn't know what is being referred to, you can still sign up. We'll post that link in the Facebook groups. You can still sign up even though the 100 day challenge has already started. You can still sign up and basically it's a daily email. Um, don't worry, it's automatic. We're not writing emails in the middle of the night and um, <laughs> it gives you an idea or a graphic or something you can either share or do or use that maybe you haven't done before to try and get some reason the goal is responsorships and awareness in your community so it's just a kind of a tip every day that some are fun and easy some might take a little bit more effort like put out a press release that you're a location but um, all of them have directions on how to do it and if any of you guys are a fundraising group leader as well um, we are going to be having another webinar tomorrow night, um, same time, same link, um, to specifically talk about some ways that you can, you know, get out there and get some sponsorships, whether it's virtual type fundraisers or, you know, social distancing um, and traditional like booths and stuff like that. And we have a couple of our um, SWAT people who are going to be sharing some fundraisers that they have had that have been very successful. So we will send out an email tomorrow with that link, but just keep an eye on that. It's another great opportunity and we'll record it as well if you can't join two nights in a row. Can you pick that up on your site? I mean, are you going to have it up on your site to review at a later time? The, the, the tomorrow night's meeting. Yes. Too. Yeah, we will have, uh, we'll record and we have a YouTube channel that we share all of our webinars on and we will circulate that through to everyone. Thank you. Welcome. All right, so I think that that has covered a lot. Some of you guys still might have some questions, um, but to not hold any of you guys here any longer, um, if you have questions that we didn't get to answer, just reach out to your liaison or myself and we are happy to you know, address that. And again, don't feel overwhelmed by anything. Um, there is pretty much not anything that we haven't heard at this point. You know, we, we deal with so many people. There's lots, everyone thinks that, you know, it's a unique situation and everywhere is a little different, but we are pretty accustomed to meeting those specific needs that you need. So just give us a call and let us help you um, come up with some ideas and solutions. Hey, Julie, before you go, this is Art in Grand Junction. Hey, Art. Hey there, Art. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead with your question. Uh, we're having a, not that much problem over here with the virus and so forth. So as far as I know, the 4,600 wreaths that we're going to be running out this year will be done the same as it has been, but we'll keep you up with that. Uh, but I just wanted to let you know that uh, we've got both of our cemeteries covered here uh, and so forth. And we're just hoping that the truck comes in. I've asked to have the truck come in to my location uh, for our uh, state cemetery for the two cemeteries that we do unload uh, wreaths from. That's awesome. Glad you guys are, you know, having a lot of luck there and just get with Megan. She'll make sure you, we've got everything, you know, I'm sure she's probably already talked to you several times about it. So we'll make sure you're all squared away. Yeah. And sorry, we were late. We'll try to get in on it tomorrow night at, with all the communications and that today with our military funerals and that it's uh, a two job hat here. So it's like, uh, it's just running here with all the military funerals that we run here in our uh, Western Colorado too. Yeah, no problem. And we'll send out a PDF for what the information that we shared tonight as well to everyone. So you kind of have that in writing and you can follow up as well. Okay. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. All right. Well, um, Amber, do you have anything?
Hey, wait, wait. May I ask? May I ask one question? Is that Harry? No, Harry. <laughs> we'll like you, Harry. You, we owe you one, Harry. Go ahead. <laughs> Don't even start because we, we're going to talk know, offline later. One, go. We owe you five. Go. Okay. Listen. Question for you: Is there the opportunity or the availability that um, they will modify the website so that we can um, put in a time for volunteers? That's where we're working on developing and okay. we are actively having that conversation with the technology team and we should have an answer within a week on how we, what we will be able to give you guys through that. That is all. I will step out of the picture. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. No, I, Julie, honestly, I, I really feel like the, the name of the game here is communication. So we appreciate everyone's time coming here tonight is the big first step. We'll be making this available like Judy, uh, Julie said, but you know, please reach out to your liaisons and my, you know, I'm, this is Amber with communications and we have a number of resources to help too. So please um, don't hesitate. Communications at readsacrossamerica.org goes to the team and we'll um, certainly help however we can to help you get where you need to be. We are working on this pretty much nonstop. <laughs> so don't, don't worry about reaching out. Okay. Appreciate everyone's time so much. Thank you, Julie. Yes, thanks. Thanks, thanks everyone for joining. Have, have a great everybody. day, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone from California. Thank Go you, watch. everybody. Be Get safe. Lots of wreaths for the cemeteries. Yes. <laughs> Maybe some snow. Thank Maybe. you. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a picture here. Do you know where this picture is? That picture I don't know who's on, talking. <laughs> no, no, that picture's on Normandy Beach in France. Oh. oh. Guy sent me. It's a video of a, a kid sitting there with a flag, and he holds the flag up for like almost two and a half hours. Oh, very really cool. interesting. Yep. So I kind of use it once in a while. I like it. Anyways, you okay. guys have a good one. Thank See you, you Patrick. Good night, all. Thank you.